So previously we saw an example with extreme positive assorted mating leading to changes in genotype frequencies. What we want to think about now is how to quantify changes in genotype frequencies in kind of less extreme things, right? Because of course in reality, strict inbreeding with no other matings occurring is rare. So what we want to do now is quantify changes in genotype frequencies due to not full inbreeding, but other sorts of things. So the way we're going to quantify this is with the value f, and f is going to kind of just be defined as this value here, where HO is going to be the Hardy-Weinberg expected frequency of this genotype and HI is going to be the observed frequency of this genotype. So of course this is 2PQ and this can be whatever we see, right? So with inbreeding, this strict inbreeding we just looked at, this was much smaller than this. That would give you this 2PQ, this is a smaller value, you get a positive value in the numerator. This value here is also a positive value. So you would get positive value if you had inbreeding, right, positive assorted mating, and you would get a negative value here if you had, let's say, negative assorted mating leading to more heterozygotes than you would expect based on Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So this is just a definition. We're using this value f to represent the discrepancy between observed and expected frequencies of heterozygotes. So now let's take this equation and work with it a little bit. So let's multiply both sides by HO. So we have HOF equals HO minus HI. And then we're going to subtract HO from both sides. HOF minus HO equals negative HI. And then we have too many negatives, so let's multiply both sides by negative 1. So that will give us HO minus HOF h i and then we have an h o in both terms there h o 1 minus f equals h i so remember h i is our observed frequency h o was our 2 p q basically right our expected under hardy weinberg and then 1 minus f is showing the degree to which f is kind of reducing the observed frequency uh, relative to what we expect. And so the way this is going to work is if we think about our genotype frequencies here, the frequency of the heterozygotes here are going to be 2PQ1 minus F, right? The observed frequency there is given by this, and that was 2PQ. And what are the frequencies here? We have starting off kind of our Hardy-Weinberg frequencies. And then if we think about what's happening to the heterozygotes, it's a negative 2PQF that's being removed from here. And so some of that's going to this genotype, some of that's going to this genotype. And how much? Well, if you've got minus 2PQF, some of them will go here, PQF. And some of them will go here, P, Q, F. So those will be our observed frequencies of these homozygous genotypes. They'll be the expectation from Hardy-Weinberg plus P, Q, F. So these F statistics are used in a number of cases where things aren't clearly defined as inbreeding. So for example, something called population substructuring that's where you have populations where not every single individual um, mates with every other individual. There are kind of subpopulations. And spatial effects. So this is when, um, for example, there are different regions and maybe individuals mate within regions with each other more than they mate across regions. And so population substructuring and spatial effects are often modeled with F statistics. So if you're a conservation manager and you're interested in what's the degree of inbreeding 
in your population arising from, say, habitat fragmentation, you would use F statistics, because you can measure this and this and this, and then you can calculate F, and you can see kind of what sort of inbreeding is being caused by habitat fragmentation or isolation of certain areas. This value F is also, and we won't go through the math of this, but it's also the probability that two alleles, if you choose them from the population, are what's called identical by descent, or IBD. What identical by descent means is they are inherited copies of the exact same allele, right? So from the same individual, from the same chromosome, the exact same allele in an ancestor. So when you randomly choose two alleles from a population, F is the probability that those two alleles are exactly the same because they were the same in an ancestor. And if we think about what an F value of one would mean, an F value of one here would mean that there are no observed heterozygotes whatsoever. Every individual is homozygous, right? the most extreme possible form of kind of result from inbreeding. And basically every individual has one of two alleles, and those alleles will be the same as had been in some sort of ancestor. And we've seen an idea kind of like this before when we were thinking about probabilities of alleles being the same. You can think of F as kind of a population version of R, our coefficient of relatedness from earlier. Remember this coefficient of relatedness was the probability that two alleles from an ancestor end up in two different individuals. F is kind of like a population version of that. Right? And so if everybody was closely related and lots of inbreeding was going on, we know that R would be much higher between particular individuals, and that's going to be reflected by a much higher value of F. And the final thing to note about this is that smaller populations should have, and actually will have, higher values of F due to what we can call unavoidable inbreeding. So we've been thinking about inbreeding as um, kind of genotypes searching each other out and mating with similar genotypes, but if you have a small population, at a certain point it becomes impossible to find individuals that you're not related to to mate with them, right? So when you're born and you start searching for your mate, you could avoid your siblings, but in a very, very small population, you're going to have to start mating with cousins or second cousins at some point, otherwise there may be no individuals to mate with. So smaller populations will end up having the higher F values due to unavoidable inbreeding. It will be impossible for individuals to find unrelated individuals to mate with. So that means generating a value of R, which is generating a value of F. And if these smaller populations have these higher values of F, that means smaller populations will have fewer heterozygotes, smaller populations will have more homozygotes, and there'll actually be less genetic diversity in the population. And if you remember from earlier, the rate of evolution of a population was maximized when it had the most genetic diversity. So this is another way of realizing that smaller populations, because of this unavoidable inbreeding, they'll have larger values of F, they'll have lower frequencies of heterozygotes, which is lower levels of genetic diversity, they'll have a reduced speed of evolution and ability to respond to environmental change. And this is just another way of realizing that one of the concerns we have about endangered species and small populations is that their rate of evolution will be very low, and this is another way of kind of seeing that numerically. So next we'll actually look at how this equation can be used to do a numerical example to actually quantify the cost of inbreeding.